it was a new look Trek Segafredo that arrived at the 2017 Tour of California. Leading the team was a new recruit, John Degenkolb, hoping a new team and new season would provide the fresh start he needed after a tough 2016. The Tour of California is becoming the key race for team sprinters and leadout trains to prepare for the Tour de France, and joining Degenkolb at Trek Segafredo is Kuhn de Court, his primary leadout man and road captain. Uh, it's, it's important for him to start the sprint at the right speed and in the right spot, and, and basically that is my responsibility. Apart from that, I'm also the road captain. Decisions that have to be made on the bike, because you, you can't always discuss everything with the director sportif in the car, so any, any sort of split-second decisions, uh, they're all my decision. With a primary goal of preparing for the tour, Degenkolb and his lead-out train were all on Trek Madone RSL bikes, with a mixture of old and new Durace Di2, as well as a full suite of Bontrager components, including Aeolus 5 tubulars, using camtail tube shapes, next-level integrated brakes, the Madone Triple X integrated bar and stem, unique vector wings, and fully internal cable routing. Trek says the Madone is the fastest aero road bike in the world, but more importantly, after extensive independent testing, the data freaks at German and tour magazine agree with them. The question then becomes, how much does this matter on the road? Well, it, it, it is a huge difference. I get easily over 60 kilometers an hour, and uh, where, where John probably gets up to 70 kilometers an hour at these speeds, tiny little bit of uh, aerodynamic drag difference is, is a huge difference in speed. With deep wheels and deep tube shapes, comfort can be a real concern on an aero road bike, but the Madone borrows the ISO speed decoupler from the classics focused Domane to smooth out the long miles of Pro Must Ride. The bike I I really enjoy riding, it's a super aero, but it's still comfortable. I mean, uh, f for me that was really a, a, big, uh, a big surprise. Mountain stages, criterium, sprint days, in, in all stages it, it handles really well. And, and for me, uh, with, with the aerodynamic uh, advantage you have, I, I, don't, I don't know why I would choose a different bike. Much like the Madone, the Trek Segafredo team are not one-trick ponies. While dialing in Degenkolb's leadout was the priority, young Ruben Guerrero, a first-year World Tour rider, was there to test his climbing legs, and he did it on the Amonda. Uh, for me, personality, I, I love like to see these lightest bikes. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's amazing in the corners, it's so light and uh, to, to climb uh, is one of the best or I think it's the best in the world. The Amonda, with the help of Bontrager, was the lightest production bike ever when first released. It's Trek's pure stiffness to weight ratio racer, with the frame hitting just 690 grams on the scale, thanks to Trek's legendary OCLV process and 700 series carbon. Exactly how much ballast it takes to make Guerrero's bike legal at 6.8 kilos is a closely guarded secret. This is the bike Alberto Contador will campaign at the Tour de France this summer. As the world tour moves from the cobblestones of the spring classics to the mountains and tours of summer, Trek Segafredo pros have two potent tools to turn to, depending on their own riding style. The Trek Madone, based on some testing, the fastest road bike in the Peloton, or the Amonda, the lightest production bike ever made. It's up to riders like Degenkolb and Decourt, Guerrero and Contador to do the rest.